Hello, I'm Robin Mitchell and this is Maker.io. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the IIoT sensor project that we built this month. Now, this project is a simple IIoT sensor which can monitor vibrations from machinery such as drills or bandsaws and then sends this data over the local network to a server which can be executed on a Raspberry Pi a Windows machine or a Linux system. Now, as I know Linux and Raspberry Pi are the same, you know, if you're using Raspberry, but just try and make a distinction here. Now, this sensor board is based on the MPU9250, which is a three axis uh, accelerometer and a three axis magnometer. Magnometer? Not quite sure. The point is, we're not using the magnetic field here, we're just looking at the vibration, so we're only using the accelerometer data. Now, the project is based around the Adafruit Hazard and this is what reads the sensor and then sends the information wirelessly over the local network. Now the reason why we use a local network in this project is because cloud services such as Adafruit.io or I think if you're American it's Adafruit.io, those services are great for things like simple IoT sensors when you've got temperature, humidity, the, the state of a door or uh, maybe even a sweet machine. But when it comes to large quantities of data, you would use up your allocated bandwidth in a few seconds with this system because this can be sending up to 50 packets per second of data and a local network can handle that volume mainly because of the fact that we're not, we haven't got any limiters. So your local network is determined by you and your ability of your router and most of these can stream large quantities of data very easy for very very it's very very easy for these things to handle the amount of data that these sensors can produce but something like the online cloud services will not now the code on the arduino is quite simple and it takes advantage of the mpu9250 library which can be obtained using the arduino's uh, library manager now in the code itself you will have to make a few changes obviously you're going to need to put in your own wi-fi's ssid and your own Wi-Fi's password, and you'll also need to input your server's IP address, which can be found on whatever local machine you're using. If you're using Windows, you can use the command prompt, and if you're using the Raspbian, you can use the terminal. So the setup part of the code simply initiates the Wi-Fi, it initiates the I2C protocol because the MPU9250 uses I2C for communication, and then it connects to the Wi-Fi and then attempts to connect to the server. Again, the code in the Arduino is very simple and every 16 milliseconds, which is done by using the mills function, we simply read the MPU9250 and produce an accelerometer reading. Now, when trying to find the resultant vector of a three axis system, you square each one, sum them together, and then do the cube root. But I found that I got better results if I just didn't bother with the cube root as I found that the results were more sensitive, so it made things easier to process. And you may notice that the data in this project isn't sent as raw numbers, but instead as a tokenized packet. Now the first token in our packet is the equipment type that we attach our sensor to. So for example, it could be a drill or a bandsaw or a drill press or something like that. The second tokenized packet is the unique ID. Now in this case, we're just using one, but you could set this to any ID you wanted, and this will allow for easy handling of multiple sensors. The third packet is simply the acceleration that we're monitoring as a string. Now it's important that you send this as a string, not as a number. And then the last token is an end packet that just is useful for the server to know where the end of the message is. Now the server code in this project is incredibly trivial and we're only using this code as an example to show how we can record the data from the sensor. And all we have to do is simply create a socket by using the import socket function in Python and then using the different variables such as the TCIP and the TCP port so we can open up a port on our local network and then we can assign a socket object to a variable in this case s and then we listen to this port for incoming connections then we wait for an incoming connection and then once that's accepted we do the infinite loop which is the while one loop and all we have to do is to simply receive the data and then print the data out so that's all we have time for today for this project video thank you for watching and see you next time